Hey, how's it going? Dylan here. This is a quick overview of my uh, the first version of my cinematic ocean shader uh, for Unreal Engine 5. So basically, um, as you can see, it's kind of like a high quality um, <clears throat> ocean shader system. Uh, so it's a blueprint and a material uh, used to, for high quality cinematic rendering through Movie Render Queue. Um, so that is the intended use of this version, at least, um, which was to fill a gap uh, initially. Um, the idea came to me because at my day job, um, we were switching to, well, we were starting to switch to Unreal Engine 5 last year um, for some smaller projects um, that didn't require stability all the time. And uh, we needed uh, some kind of ocean um, implementation that was customizable, so material-based something we could plug into and customize based on the project. And basically, uh, obviously tessellation is depreciated in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so we had to find a way to uh, get rid of the old way of doing it with a massive plane and tessellating the <laughs> tessellating it to, to hell. And uh, this was what I came up with um, in terms of uh, a solution, which to be honest, it, it turned out actually way better than I ever thought it would. It looks far better than anything that we created in UE4 and uh, yeah I'm pretty proud of it and I've kind of whipped up a basic version of it for this first release. So essentially what it is, is it is a um, ocean kind of a representation of a deep ocean surface uh, in Unreal Engine 5 and the way it works is it is um, it's basically the blueprint system places uh, water planes in a grid, um, higher quality ones closer to the camera, lower quality far away. Um, and yeah, that's how we kind of can't get enough geometric detail, which is then driven by a fairly complex Gerstner based shader with about 96 Gerstner waves. Um, so quite a bit. And uh, instead of kind of uh, one of the problems with having so many Gerstner waves in general, in systems you'd have to set each one of them individually to kind of get the look you want but this system is kind of like a chain system so each one has variables which the like say one wave is this much amplitude the next one might be uh, half the amplitude of the previous one and it might be a slightly different direction than the previous one uh, based on a bunch of parameters in the material so it's quite kind of easy to I mean well, I won't say easy to get the perfect look but it is much easier than a traditional Gerstner setup to kind of get uh, to, to make changes um, and see what they kind of do to the system. So we'll have a quick overview of what this entails in here. I'll just stop here. So in the editor, basically, when you place down, you will in the editor, you'll be presented with your main blueprints and materials folder inside the blueprints folder. Just drag and drop the BP Ocean. Um, we'll zero her out. Okay, so this is what you are presented with when you chuck it into your scene. So what we've got here is our basic blueprint system. And if I, if you look in the wireframe view, um, it's essentially a bunch of planes. You can't really see them, but they are laid out in a grid, and in the editor in editor mode it just displays the lowest quality plane uh, so for ease of use so everything's nice and fast and responsive for your editor needs just gives you a general look kind of uh, mood of what the water kind of looks like um, and over here in the settings we've got a bunch of LOD settings um, to do with how far away from the camera everything changes um, like the the bias and things like that so you can edit like the kind of the gradient in terms of from high detail to low from the camera position based on your needs. We've also got the grid settings here. So this obviously the extent, if I lower it, we get a smaller amount of um, planes, uh, etc. Uh, we've also got density. So if you want that same area, but you want more planes in it, so to up the quality, we can up that there. So now there's four times as many planes in there. Obviously that does affect performance um, but you know it depends on how high quality you want to get if you're doing a real close-up at the center 
um, at the center of the plane and then um, you still want to be able to see stuff out the out far in the distance then you know you can do that um, and I've done some actually really high quality close-up shots for a client at work so that was and it actually turned out really nice put that back to one <clears throat> and you've got the base scale here so that's essentially the the individual scale of the planes as you can see um, for this purpose I'll set it at 200 so that feels pretty good in the materials you know we've got the main ocean material and we've also got the far ocean material now what we can do is we can enable the outer plane up here and then as you can see we've got now like a, a horizon spanning plane so that material here is basically an instance of this guy and uh, that's just the same thing basically without any world position offset so it's just flat to extend off in the distance <clears throat> we do have shadows here as well um, now this is this can be, be fairly brutal on uh, VRAM especially if you have the new um, virtual shadow maps enabled uh, so it actually is usually like by default it's off I don't generally use it unless it, the Sun is at a really low angle um, and you want to get kind of like the specular occlusion if you're looking at a sunset or something uh, so just be careful with that because it can crash <laughs> it can run out of VRAM if you have too high detail settings <clears throat> and we also have a global material scale which basically what you can do with that is you can actually make the it, it affects all the um, scale based attributes of the material so that's nice and easy quick way of making some like making it uh, higher frequency or like small or higher or sorry or lower frequency so right off the bat there if we've got these settings I can just hit play here and you can see we've instantly got some really nice high detail noise or really nice high detail Gerstner waves coming here high frequency uh, and it gives a really nice effect uh, for this kind of look uh, and feel this isn't like this this is the type of look it's best geared towards but you can tweak it quite a bit as I'll show in the material settings in a sec um, and like even this it gives you a really nice base to, to start from if we go ahead and look at the materials so we've got the ocean inst so yeah. I'll just hit play and I'll show you the settings <clears throat> so first we've got color which is obviously you know normal kind of stuff um, so your color scalars so your shallow min max so for instance you can bring down the kind of shallow water it's like a gradient between two colors just to give some variation for example we've got foam settings so there is basic foam in here it's not that great it's just a kind of a fallback foam um, for a future release I'll be um, implementing uh, a render target based foam that I've been working on but it needs quite a bit of more work to to be ready for release so for example the foam that we have here at the moment is um, <coughs> is just basic height based foam um, so it depends on what you want to use it for so for example get some bits on the peaks and such let's go your foam controls there we also have um, all of the Gerstner uh, controls so the main meat of the material is just here so you know, you've got your kind of amplitude um, etc and things like that you know you've got <clears throat> your amplitude multiplies so for instance um, each successive wave how much that in contributes to the main amplitude of the material so if you wanted like kind of the main wave to waves to be larger and then all of the smaller ones to not contribute much then you can get kind of this effect or vice versa you can <laughs> make things go crazy by making everything the same amplitude don't know why you would <clears throat> you've got amplitude separation which is a similar one so just basically two different levels of the same thing <clears throat> just as a bit of a different effect amplitude variation which essentially 
Um, this is just pure with, from the Gerstner waves, and then with noise-based uh, breakup, essentially, this is. Which uh, just adds a little bit more variation to it, makes it feel a bit more random. <clears throat> We've got direction spread, so... Um, as you can see, it kind of looks like it tiles a bit now, but with a 0.1, it kind of breaks that up. You know, the rest of the attributes kind of speak for themselves. You've got speed, speed multiply, like which is again the successive speed of each wave, and wavelength, and etc. So, a bunch of fun things to do. You've also got the wave group A and B down the bottom, which is essentially uh, the Gerstners are split into two 48 groups of 48 waves, um, and you can kind of, if you want the waves to feel more like they're going in the same direction, you can set them to the same direction and lower the spread. So now, as you can see, it feels like the waves are all going in the same direction if you want like a directional effect there. And yeah, you've got your color attributes here, your normal attributes, and specular. And that's about it. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this little quick overview of this um, release. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed, and hit me up on Twitter if you have any questions, at Dilzarex, or in the comments below. Enjoy your day!